In this video, I'm going to provide a brief tutorial and overview of the Sky Safari app. We're looking specifically at Sky Safari version 6 plus, and this is a, a great app. Let's take a look at what it contains. So here on the main screen, obviously we have a view of the sky and the particular settings that I have are during the total solar eclipse of Monday, December 14th, 2020, which so few of us were able to see because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Up along the top of the screen, you will always see your current location displayed as well as the date and time to which the app is set, not necessarily your current day and time. Down along the bottom, we have a menu of different features. And if you're holding your phone in the normal mode, you may not realize that there are more options on this menu if you scroll over to the right. If you flip your phone over into landscape mode, you'll get to see all of those at one time. Now, before we start diving deep into all of the different features and everything here in Sky Safari, we need to have the right settings in order to make the most out of this and for it to be usable at your location. Now, what I've done for my astronomy courses is I've created a settings file, which you can access and load, and it contains what I consider to be pretty much ideal settings for most observers. If you are in one of the classes, you'll receive that through the course. If you're stumbling across this video on the internet, glad to have you with us. Um, look for the settings file linked in the show notes. Let me show you how to load this first. What you're going to need to do is download the file and send it to your mobile device. I send it by email, but you could also text it to yourself. We're simply going to open the file. It says that it has imported this. If you click view, it's going to give you only a preview of the settings. If you click OK, nothing will appear to happen. Here's how you access and apply the settings file. It's already been linked to the app, but now let's go get it. We're going to hit settings from the menu along the bottom. We're going to scroll down and we're looking for save and restore settings right here. We're going to go into it and up here at the top, you'll see this long list of settings files that I've created for different purposes and the coordinates lab two is what I've loaded for this. We're going to select the file. You can preview the settings if you like, but we're just going to go ahead and apply them. And there you have it. Now, this particular settings file is to a specific location for and time for assignments in the course. What you'll want to do if you're just using this for general purposes is you're going to want to change your settings, you want to change your location and your time, and I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. But here we are, we have everything on the screen. We have the constellations labeled along with a few of the bright stars. You can see the yellow line is the ecliptic, and we have a coordinate grid displayed. Down at the bottom, this is one of the nice things that I, I personally like, the green line, the solid green line, is the horizon. So that's an altitude of zero degrees. Below that, it's translucent green, and that shows you what's below the horizon at the moment. I like this because it'll tell me if something that I was interested in viewing has just set off in the west, or I can look over in the east to see if something interesting is about to come up above the horizon. So you can scroll all through here doing all kinds of different things. Um, let me introduce you to the different features along here. Uh, first is the search. Let's say we are just trying to find something. There are two different ways to conduct searches. The easiest is with the search button, and you have all kinds of different options here. Uh, so for example, we could say we are after the planets and we are interested in a certain planet. Let's say I want to take a look at Mars. So we can select that. A bunch of information is displayed. See these two dots down here at the bottom? 
That means that there is an additional window if I swipe over to the right and it has all kinds of general information about the planet Mars. But back here on the left, this is a lot of the information that we're going to be accessing frequently, uh, different things about the, about the objects, and um, I'm not going to go into too much detail about that right now. What we want to do is we want to find Mars in the sky or in this app. So let's hit the center button and it scrolls over and there's Mars right there with the cursor blinking around it. The other way to conduct a search uh, is what used to be known as the advanced search and in version 6 it's in a very different place than what version 5 had. We're going to go to observe planner and if you want to look for specific types of objects you've got all types of options that you can select from if you're looking for certain brightnesses or certain sizes or in a certain range of coordinates all of that is in here you even have the ability to specify the time period that you're looking specifically for or if you want to restrict your search to objects of a certain kind within just a particular constellation. That's all here as well. Uh, it's a very helpful feature, especially if you're getting into deep sky observing. Now let's go ahead and briefly we're going to go through a bunch of the main options. The thing that you're going to do the most is you're going to be changing your time and your location. Now the time window is visible here, but if you hit time on the screen You'll see it'll disappear again, tap it again to bring it back up. You can simply highlight or underline, see the 12 is underlined. So every time I click one of these buttons here, we're going to jump forward one hour. If I want to change that and I want to go by one day, you can touch like so. If you want to go multiple days at a time, like I want to go you know, seven days at a time, you have that option. You can also change your month by tapping the month or your year by tapping the year in the date display. Same with hours, minutes, or seconds. Changing your time is very, very flexible. Now one thing to look out for are these two arrows on the right. This one and this one on the far left. These are your animate buttons. So if you want to start setting this to animate, simply tap that, and we're moving forward one second at a time. Yeah, let's change that. Let's go one minute at a time. And you can see things change on the screen. To go in reverse, simply hit the other arrow, and you are off to the races. The other big thing you're going to want to do is change your location. And here we're going to go into the settings and we're going to find lots and lots of different things available. You have your date and time. If you want to make big changes in time, you can do this from here. The most important thing is to always make sure your automatic daylight savings time is selected. All right, let me go ahead and let's just set to our current time. And we'll go back to the menu. The other thing you're going to change frequently is the location. There are a number of different ways that you can change the location. You can set your own latitude and longitude, elevation and time zone if you happen to know that. You can choose the location from a list, in which case you select your country and then it gives you a bunch of cities to choose from. You can choose from a map. Or if you have settings that you've already look, saved, locations that you visit frequently, you can pull that up as well. What we're going to do, what you will want to do if you loaded the settings file I just gave you, is you're going to want to change this to your current location and hit done. Now, also in the settings, there are lots of different ways to customize your view and the format of any number of things. I'm going to try and move through those absolutely as quickly as possible. Uh, coordinates. 
You can change the type of coordinate grid that's being displayed. Procession, we're not really going to deal with. Formats, if you want to change the way that your time is displayed or your date, or if you want to give get coordinates of any kind in a certain format, you can do degrees, minutes, seconds, a bunch of different options. You can just have decimal degrees, which is what you happen to see selected here. Lots of different things that you are able to customize here in formats, but typically once you pick something, you're not going to need to fiddle with that setting very much. Appearance and behavior, uh, there's not a whole lot to that. If you want your sound effects on, you might want to take a look at these two settings and play with the different uh, options in there. Horizon and sky, this is an important one. If you want to fiddle with it, you can change your display. If you don't like that green translucent area, you can always choose to display the horizon with uh, not a translucent area. It can be completely opaque, or you can use an image of some kind. And there are lots of options of images for you to choose from down below. All right, moving on. Solar system. If you want grids turned on, if you want to see the planets, or if you want them hidden, all kinds of things you can turn on or off over here. Um, probably the most useful is taking the orbits of planets and turning them on or off, just depending on what you're doing. When you turn them on, sometimes the screen can get a little bit crowded. That's why I opt to leave these off, but there may be times when you want to see those orbits so you can see where the planet is headed next. Stars, the magnitude limit is currently set to 4.7. That's pretty good. That's a nice dark sky, but it's not super dark. It's in the range that most people will be able to see if they go out to a dark sky site. Um, you can turn names on or off. Same thing with deep sky, a very similar set of options. You can turn off the symbols for all kinds of different deep sky objects. The Milky Way, if you want to turn the Milky Way on or off or change the way it's presented, those abilities are here. Constellations and grid and reference are what we are going to focus on a lot. Uh, you can display your constellations in different ways. If you want to get all mythical and artistic, you can turn those images on. I'm going to leave mine off here. And then grid and reference, you saw the coordinate grid that was on the screen just a little bit ago. If you want to turn that grid off, you can do so very easily right here. There are a number of other more technical things like the celestial coordinate grids, the ecliptic, meridians, etc. Most of these are not necessary for most people, and that's why you see the majority of these are checked off. Okay, so we're, we're looking pretty good here. That's our quick run through of the various settings. Um, now, on your main display here, you are able to zoom in much further than you might realize. So we're going to keep on zooming in on Mars. Tell you what, let's make this easy. We have Mars selected. Uh, let's look at the selection menu. You see a number of things here. Uh, what we want to do is we want to center this object. So now Mars is in the middle of the screen. It might not look like it because our time window is taking up a bit of the screen, but there you go. All right, so now let's zoom in on Mars. You can zoom in quite far, and on planets, once you're at a certain zoom factor, you'll be able to see an image of the planet and even a couple of the moons of Mars hanging out here. There's Phobos and Deimos. Now, one thing that sometimes happens by accident and people don't know how to get out of it is let's say you are going to uh, look at Mars, but you accidentally hit this button to orbit the object. What the app is doing is, is it's transporting us through the solar system. So now we are in orbit 
around Mars. Now, this is fun, but sometimes it's a problem. How do we get back to our normal view? See this Earth symbol down here at the bottom? Sometimes that can be hidden. Oh, nope, the new version doesn't hide it. If you want to return to Earth and see what it looks like from the surface of our planet, that's very easy to do. Simply hit the Earth icon and the app will transport you back to the surface of the Earth, back to your normal view, uh, which was already zoomed in. So let's zoom back out here to see the main sky. Okay, two final things very, very quickly. I'm sorry, three final things very, very quickly. Um, there are a couple of other things on the menu that we haven't looked at. If you are using this app on a device that has a compass, you can turn on your compass. And now wherever you point the phone, the app will adjust and say, hey, this is what your phone is looking at. If you're out at night and you want to protect your night vision, simply turn on the night feature and everything will go to red to help you preserve your night vision. All right, the final thing before we call it a wrap on this video are your coordinate grids. So along the edges here, we had the celestial coordinates turned on. You'll see, let me scroll over to a, a different spot here. All right, this area on the left where you see everything coming out like spokes from the center of a wheel. These lines are your altitude lines. I'm sorry, not altitude, declination lines. And the circles are going to be your right ascension lines. Now, the coordinate grid, the coordinates themselves are always displayed along the very edge of the screen. So here we see this curved line is for six hours of right ascension. This curved line is for eight. This curved line is for 10. If we zoom in, the coordinate grid will change. Again, everything is always displayed along the edge. Here's 20 hours, here's 22. But the further you zoom in, the grid will change and zoom in to give you more precise measurements. So for example, see here we're at 19 hours and 20 minutes, 19 hours even, 1840. And here we also have the plus 25, that's your declination, plus 20, declination, plus 15, and those will change as you scroll around. Okay, this video ended up being a little bit longer than I intended, but I hope all of these features are helpful to you, ladies and gents, as you get to use this app. It's a great tool, and I hope you enjoy it.